Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Today, we're going to have a story about some men that got healed. Not just one man, but several. Jesus was always among sick people. You know that. At this point, everywhere he went, there were sick people. But we never read of him getting sick. Have you ever noticed that, boys and girls? Jesus never got sick. Mm -mm. He was like a fountain of life. Pouring forth help. Health came out of him. Remember the lady that reached out and touched the hem of his garment? Help. He could feel the power go out from him. He just, his whole body emanated. That means he gave it out. It just, like, glowed. Help. Strength and happiness to others. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. That's what he said. Life more abundant. That is why so many people flocked to be around him, gathered around him. They all, all wanted to be well, and they all wanted to be strong. No sickness, no sickness seemed too difficult for him. He was able to cure the worst of diseases. As Jesus was talk, walking into a village one day, some men called out to him. Please help us, Jesus, they shouted. Jesus stopped walking and looked to see who was calling. Several men were calling. I'm going to turn you to the board. Actually, it was 10 men who were standing away from all the other people. The men had the dreadful disease of leprosy. Because of their sickness, they could not go close to other people. That sounds like a sickness we have today in a way, doesn't it, boys and girls? The coronavirus? Mm-hmm, it does. They could not live at home with their families. They had to live by themselves or others who already had leprosy. This was so the well people could not get this terrible disease. Leprosy also made a person lose feeling in his fingers, his toes, and face. Sometimes the lepers did not have enough food to eat and were hungry. They were utterly miserable. Jesus knew about the lepers. He felt sorry for the men. Jesus called back to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. The people who heard Jesus say these words to the lepers were surprised. Why tell these men to go see the priest, they wondered. Only when all the sores were gone were lepers supposed to go and show themselves to the priest. Only then would the priest let them go back home? Yes, it was a very strange thing for Jesus to say. The people thought. Everyone could see that the sores were still on the leper's skin. So Jesus told these lepers to go back to go see the priest. But everybody said, that's not right. That's not right. They didn't agree with what Jesus said because you were supposed to go to the priest after the leprosy was gone. But that's not what happened. Jesus told them to go to the priest. But we're about to find out what happened, boys and girls. Sometimes you can't go with what everybody else is saying. Sometimes you got to live by that faith and what you feel like God's telling you to do. Let's see what happened in this story. 
the lepers did not stop to ask any questions. They did exactly like Jesus said to do. They trusted him. There's that faith again, boys and girls. They trusted. They believed. And they were quick to obey. Obedience. How many times, times have we talked about it being obedient? Sometimes it's one thing to hear God speak, but you don't always obey it. That's just as important. They hurried away to find the priest because that's what Jesus told them to do. The lepers knew that Jesus would help them. They had seen and heard all the stories of Jesus healing people. They knew. They had faith. And he, and he did. He did heal them. As they hurried, as they were in a hurry to go find the priest, on their way, something happened. On their way, as they were going, as they were believing, on their way, something happened. That's important, boys and girls. One of the lepers looked at his body. He said, look, look, the sores are gone. They're gone. They just disappeared. They're gone. Then all the, the rest of the men looked at their arms and their body, and they said, oh, ours are gone too. Their skin was just as soft as a baby's again. No sores, no, no wounds or any kind of discoloration. It was smooth and soft, just like a little baby's. It was a happy time for those lepers, don't you think? Yeah. They were well, and guess what? They could go back home and be with their families. Jesus watched them leave one by one. Then, to his great joy, he saw one of them turn around and he came running back to Jesus, boys and girls. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and he cried, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus said, were there not ten healed? Where are the other nine? And that's right, boys and girls. What happened to the other, the other men? There were ten. One came back. What happened to the other nine? They went back home. They forgot to tell Jesus thank you. They were in such a hurry and in they were so um, focused on themselves, what happened to them, that they forgot to be thankful. That's important, boys and girls. This man didn't forget to be thankful. Isn't it sad that the other nine men did not go back to, and at least say thank you to Jesus like this one man did? It would have made Jesus very happy. Wouldn't it make you happy if you did something for someone and they came back to tell you they were thankful instead of just running away and forgetting who you were? Think about that, boys and girls. That's why we need to be thankful. Every day we need to be thankful for what God does for us and gives us. He may not heal us of leprosy, but he, he does other things and he blesses us and he can heal us. Mm -hmm. He can heal this virus, boys and girls. This virus is not from God. And if we pray, he can heal this virus. He can totally eliminate it. But his people have to pray. And they have to turn away from their evil wickedness. And they have to listen to what he's saying, like these lepers. And they have to obey. You can't go running back. You have to obey and be thankful. Well, this same Jesus who helped the lepers long, long ago will help you. He has helped Miss Pam. He's done mighty miracles for Miss Pam and her family. 
and he can do the same thing for you. Won't you remember to be thankful and thank him every day? Will you boys and girls and adults? It doesn't take a lot of time to be thankful. This is one way you show Jesus how much you love him. If you woke up this morning, that's one thing to be thankful for. If you have a bed to go to sleep in at night, that's another thing to be thankful for. If you have food to eat with, that's another thing to be thankful for. If you have a roof over your head, that's another thing. There's so many things to be thankful for. But the one thing that we should all be most thankful for is Jesus and for the life that he lived and for his going to that old rugged cross and dying on that cross. But on the third day, on the third day, he arose out of that grave and now he's alive forevermore with the Father in heaven. And if we believe in him and we follow after him, we will be with him. We will have eternal life, just like he said. He came to give us life and to give us life abundantly here on earth and for his kingdom. So boys and girls, just be thankful today. Don't be like the other nine. He can still do good things for everybody. He can heal people and they may not come back to him. But this one man knew what was important. Let's be like that one man that came back and said, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay? All right, let's have a word of prayer and I'll let you go. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, once again for a wonderful story. How you, Lord, healed the ten lepers, Father, and how that one chose to come back and say, Thank you. I'm thankful. And Father, I just want to say thank you. Lord, you've healed me of many things, my sin mostly. And Lord, every time I fall down, you still help me get back up. So Father, I just, I am thankful that you are a forgiving and a loving and merciful Father. Thank you that Jesus came and he lived the life and died the death and rose from the grave to give us everlasting life. Once again, Father, we are thankful. We are thankful. We love you, Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Our Lord and our Savior, amen. Okay, boys and girls, that's today's story. I'll see you next time. Miss Pam loves you, but God loves you so, 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 so much. Bye-bye.